Here's a challenge that sounds impossible. We need to find all positive integers in such that n times 2 to the power n plus 1 equals a perfect square. That is, it equals k squared for some whole number k. Sounds like there could be infinitely many solutions, right? But here's the twist. There are only two, and we're about to prove exactly why. Let's write this out. And times 2 to the power n plus 1 equals k squared, where k is some positive integer we're looking for. Now, to reveal the hidden structure, we want to isolate the exponential term. So let's move this plus 1 to the other side. Subtracting 1 from both sides gives us n times 2 to the n equals k squared minus 1. And here's where something beautiful happens. This right side, k squared minus 1, is what we call a difference of squares. You might remember from algebra that any expression like a squared minus b squared can be factored as a plus b times a minus b. In our case, it's k squared minus 1 squared. So k squared minus 1 factors beautifully into k minus 1 times k plus 1. Now we have n times 2 to the n equals the product of two consecutive even numbers that differ by exactly 2. To crack this problem, we're going to use a classic strategy. We'll split our analysis into two cases, when n is odd and when n is even. Let's start with odd n. Let's bring back our factored equation. When n is odd, we need to figure out what this tells us about k. First observation. The left side, n times 2 to the n, is always even. Why? Because we're multiplying by a power of 2, which is always even. Going back to our original equation, k squared equals an even number plus 1. So k squared must be odd. And if k squared is odd, then k itself must be odd. This is crucial. Now, if k is odd, what does that tell us about k minus 1 and k plus 1? Well, 1 less than an odd number is even, and 1 more than an odd number is also even. So both factors on the right are even. Here's a beautiful fact. k minus 1 and k plus 1 are consecutive even numbers. Think of 6 and 8 or 10 and 12. Consecutive even numbers always share exactly one factor of 2, and nothing else. So their greatest common divisor is exactly 2. So we can write k minus 1 as 2 times a times 2 to the b, and k plus 1 as 2 times c times 2 to the d, where a and c are odd numbers, and b and d are non-negative integers counting the extra powers of 2. The key here is that a and c are odd. So all the powers of 2 are explicitly shown. When we multiply k minus 1 and k plus 1, we get a times c times 2 to the power b plus d plus 2, and this equals n times 2 to the n. Since a and c are odd, their product a times c is also odd. This means a times c must equal n. So we have two conditions. a times c equals n, and b plus d plus 2 also equals n. Now here's the key insight. The difference between k plus 1 and k minus 1 is exactly 2. Substituting our factorizations, we get 2c times 2 to the d minus 2a times 2 to the b equals 2. Dividing everything by 2 gives us this beautiful equation. cc times 2 to the d minus a times 2 to the b equals 1. Now think about this equation carefully. For the difference of these two terms to equal 1, at least one of them must be odd. But wait, they both have powers of 2 in them. For a product with a power of 2 to be odd, that power must be 2 to the 0, which is 1. So we have exactly two possibilities. Either b equals 0 or d equals 0. Let's check both. In the first case, b equals 0. From our equation c times 2 to the d minus a equals 1, and using our constraint that b plus d plus 2 equals n, we can work out what this means. This simplifies to c times 2 to the d minus a equals 1. Since b is 0, we have d plus 2 equals n, so d equals n minus 2. 
If we try the simplest case where a equals 1, we get n equals c times the quantity c times 2 to the n minus 2 minus 1. For small odd values of c, this equation has no solutions because the right side grows exponentially while n grows linearly. After checking, this case yields no solutions. Now let's try the second case where d equals 0. This gives us c minus a times 2 to the b equals 1. Since d is 0, b plus 2 equals n, so b equals n minus 2. Let's try the simplest possibility, a equals 1. If a is 1, then from a times c equals n and our other constraints, we get n equals 2 to the power n minus 2 plus 1. Let's test n equals 3. We get 3 equals 2 to the first power plus 1, which equals 2 plus 1, which equals 3. It works perfectly. We found our first solution. Let's verify in the original equation. 3 times 2 cubed plus 1 equals 3 times 8 plus 1, which is 25, and that's 5 squared. Beautiful. But here's the question. Are there other odd solutions? Let's visualize the equation n equals 2 to the n minus 2 plus 1 to see why 3 is the only solution. We'll plot two functions. The blue line represents y equals n, which is just a straight line. The yellow curve represents y equals 2 to the n minus 2 plus 1, which is an exponential function. Where these curves meet, both sides of our equation are equal. And look, they intersect at n equals 3. But what happens after that? The exponential function takes off, growing much faster than the linear function. For n equals 5, the left side is 5, but the right side is already 9. For n equals 7, it's 7 versus 33. The gap keeps widening, so they'll never meet again. So for odd n, we have exactly one solution, n equals 3. Now, let's tackle the even case. This is where things get really interesting. When n is even, we can write it as 2 times j for some positive integer j. This substitution will help us factor out powers of 2 and simplify the structure. Substituting n equals 2j into our original equation gives 2j times 2 to the 2j plus 1 equals k squared. We can rewrite 2 to the 2j as 4 to the j. Moving 1 to the other side, and factoring the right side as k minus 1 times k plus 1. Now, 2j times 4 to the j equals 2 times j times 2 to the 2j, which we can rewrite as j times 2 to the 2j plus 1. So we have j times 2 to the 2j plus 1 equals k minus 1 times k plus 1. Here's a clever trick. Since k squared is odd, k must be odd. So k minus 1 is even. Let's write k minus 1 as 2x. Then k plus 1 is 2x plus 2, which equals 2 times x plus 1. Substituting these in. This simplifies to j times 2 to the 2j plus 1 equals 4x times x plus 1. Dividing both sides by 4 gives us this beautiful result. j times 2 to the 2j minus 1 equals x times x plus 1. Look at the right side. x and x plus 1 are consecutive integers. And here's a key fact. Consecutive integers are coprime. That means they share no common factors. Think about it. 5 and 6, 10 and 11. If a number divides both, it would have to divide their difference, which is 1. So they can only share the factor 1. So the greatest common divisor of x and x plus 1 is exactly 1. Since x and x plus 1 are coprime, the entire power of 2 on the left, 2 to the 2j minus 1, must divide entirely into either x or x plus 1. It can't be split between them. This gives us two scenarios to check. First, suppose x plus 1 gets the entire power of 2, so x plus 1 equals 2 to the 2j minus 1. Then x must equal j. Substituting x equals j into x plus 1 equals 2 to the 2j minus 1 
gives us j plus 1 equals 2 to the 2j minus 1. Let's test j equals 1. We get 1 plus 1 equals 2 to the 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 2 to the first, which equals 2. And look at that, 2 equals 2. We found a solution. Since j equals 1 and n equals 2j, this means n equals 2. Let's verify. 2 times 2 squared plus 1 equals 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 9. And that's 3 squared. Perfect. But is j equals 1 the only solution to j plus 1 equals 2 to the 2j minus 1? Let's visualize it. The blue line is y equals j plus 1, growing linearly. The yellow curve is y equals 2 to the 2j minus 1, which is an even steeper exponential than before. They meet at j equals 1. But then the exponential explodes. For j equals 2, the left side is 3, but the right side is already 8. The exponential dominates completely, so they never intersect again. We need to check the other possibility. What if x gets the power of 2 and x plus 1 equals j? This gives us 2 to the 2j minus 1 plus 1 equals j. Testing j equals 1. 2 to the first plus 1 equals 3, which definitely doesn't equal 1. For any j greater than or equal to 2, 2 to the 2j minus 1 is vastly larger than j. For j equals 2, we'd need 8 plus 1 to equal 2, which is absurd. This case has no solutions. So for even n, we have exactly one solution, n equals 2. Let's bring it all together. We divided the problem by whether n is even or odd, covering all possibilities. For odd n, the only solution is n equals 3. For even n, the only solution is n equals 2. There they are, just two beautiful solutions. n equals 2 and n equals 3 are the only positive integers that make n times 2 to the n plus 1 a perfect square. What started as a seemingly open-ended problem with potentially infinitely many solutions turned out to have exactly two. The power of algebraic structure and careful case analysis revealed this elegant result. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this proof, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more beautiful mathematics. See you in the next one.